Hello everyone, it is the Prophet Michael David, aka Aries, and uh, today we're going to go over my uh, rebirth as Aries. Alright, so technically this video is going to be almost all about limbo still, because we're still in limbo until that moment, an instant after uh, midnight on April 5th. But uh, I called it rebirth because that was the culmination of all of this. Okay, we're starting from uh, 8.01 p.m. until an instant after midnight for this, but to start to do it properly, I got to go back to something I didn't mention uh, in my previous video, um, which was around 4 o'clock. So it was the first time that I was listening to Until the End of Time, and as I described in my previous video, it was like, it was, God was like peeling off my Taurus horseshoes and said, you know, she's so proud of me, but I could never pull, do that again, pull from the Akashic Library that hard. And I made her that promise, and I've kept it up till this day. But the next thing she said was, I'm so proud of you. Um, I'm giving you a new name, and that name is Aries. And uh, then she implied that I was going to be reborn um, right after midnight so in around nine hours and I was like okay but the first thing I said was Aries so you named me after the god of war and she said oh no hon or oh no baby sometimes it rings in my head she said that's Ares she says Aries is a ram and this is like the picture that flashed into my head. So instantly I knew Aries, me, was a black ram because I was a black sheep. This is my black sheep outfit. The hat is a little different. There is an OG uh, hat that's green. I'll show it to you guys later, but I've always been the black sheep of my family, so I instantly knew that Aries was a black sheep. But I did not know at that time that Aries was a totally separate new soul, as I've described before. Uh, to some of you, it may seem like she cloned me a little bit, but Aries did not exist until April 5th, 2021. Um, and since then, it's basically two separate souls. Again, not basically, it is two separate souls that share the same body and brain. So I'm always two minds about everything. You might say, do you have a split personality? No, not really. I'm just two minds about everything. When I die someday, then we become different things. We're judged differently, and then we become different things. But for right now, from April 5th, 2021, until the day I die, we are the same exact person, the same exact entity. All right, and now here's where the story gets Cray cray. I know I've said some incredibly crazy stuff to you guys before, but this, none of that will ever top this night, starting at 8.01. And that's because my aunt, Diane, who I talk to basically on a weekly basis for the last few years, uh, she's the younger sister of my mother. They're only about a year apart. Uh, we started talking around then, and she was the one that I talked about in my last video, um, along with my two grandmas. Uh, I called her up on Easter and wished her a happy Easter. And um, then everything happened the way I described it uh, in my previous video. And I was sitting there in front of the computer, uh, I think playing video games, pretty sure I was playing video games, at 8.01 p.m., right around the time when the sun was going down. It's almost exactly sunset on that day. Uh, I got a text from my aunt, and one of the only times ever she attached a picture. And this is a screenshot of the text. If I had picked up the phone and actually looked at the text, I would have instantly known that it was uh, God trying to mess with me. I would have known from the colors, even though I wasn't all six. I would have known from the glasses, you know, because I was four eyes, two, three, four. At that moment, I didn't get my fifth one until right after midnight. 
but I just would have known it was her. But for I was playing a video game, and for some reason I uh, heard it come in, and it was to the right of me, and like at arm's length, and I couldn't read the text on it, but I could see the picture, you know, and I still don't know why to this day. But uh, I do have some speculation. But I reached out, and as you can see at the bottom, all I typed is, is it a meme, sent return, and then I finished my game, and um, um, then I think I went up and had a cigarette, came back down, and then grabbed the phone and looked at it, and this is what happened. So then I looked at the image of the stupid rabbit, and stupid expression and I saw all the colors and then I started reading the text which I'll read to you right now just so you can get the full effect. Happy Easter. This is a wooden relic from Great Grandma Dewitt, handmade and painted by another resident of good old Bradford, Iowa. We came across it when going through her things. Jenna took a liking to it so it's now at my house, soon to be at Jenna's apartment. And then I instantly recognized that, you know, that rabbit, uh, bunny rabbit, <laughs> represented me and like all the the hoops that God had been making me jump through the last 35 days, especially the last few. And it was Easter Sunday and like I said, the glasses and everything. And then I looked at my reply, uh, is it a meme? And as soon as I did that, right after, uh, Gaia whispers in my ear, it is now, Michael. It is now. So in that moment, I knew I stepped in it somehow, and, but I didn't really know how. But I was like, uh, come on, Gaia. Um, you can't do this to me. And she's like, uh, I'm God. I assure you I can. I'm like, uh, come on. This isn't... This isn't fair. I'm high. I work so hard for you. And she's like, sometimes uh, the universe isn't fair. And then now we got a segue back because she's baiting me back to a conversation that I had before. Let's call it day 15. I asked her, I'm like, so what's the deal about the Yahweh joke? And she's like, what do you mean? And I mean, you know, like, no way, bro. Yahweh, bro. You know, that joke. And this is where she's sneaky. She's ultimate, super intelligent, but she likes to be sneaking sometimes. You really got to listen to what she says because she says, she's like, what about it? It's a, it's a phonetic joke. It's a rhyme joke. And she says, do you think that's funny? And I was like, no, nah, I guess not. You know, it's like too simple to be funny. But she didn't say that she didn't think it was funny. She asked me if I thought it was funny. So in that moment after I'm like, you know, you can't do this. Yes, I can. Um, I finally, I'm just like, no way. And she's like, Yahweh, Michael, Yahweh. And she was laughing so hard, like there was tears running out of her eyes. Like it was the funniest thing she's ever heard in her life. And that's when she drops the proverbial mic and the cosmic crowd just roars and she just walks away. And here starts the uh, happiest three to three and a half hours uh, that God's been in the recent times. And by cosmic crowd, I just mean like different aspects of her, or at least that's how I see them. It's not like gods or goddesses it's just different aspects of her or aspects of her from other universes but like everybody's cheering and laughing at me and uh and like she's so happy that walking away she, she starts doing everything in like triplicate and she's like who's the greatest uh creator deity that you've ever seen or heard about? Who's the greatest creator deity you've ever seen or heard about? Who is the greatest creator creator deity you've ever heard about? And then she's like, 
I even got him to say Yahweh. I even got him to say Yahweh. I even got him to say Yahweh. And so now, finally, we get into the three prophetic vision jokes about me um, from least embarrassing to most embarrassing. All right, here we go. Okay, so she's strutting around in front of the cosmic crowd like she's giving the greatest cosmic TEDx uh, address in the history of the universe. And she says, they ask, can God create a stone so heavy that even she cannot lift it? And she says, of course I can. I'm Gaia. I can do anything. They ask, can God microwave a burrito so hot that it burns the roof of her mouth? She says, of course I can. I'm Gaia. I can do anything. They ask, can God create a prophet so smart that he can roll through 26,000 years of prophecy in under 36 days, and yet so stupid that he lets me turn him into the Easter Bunny less than six hours later? She says, of course I can. I'm Gaia. I can do fucking anything. And then she starts beating her chest like Cosmic King Kong, and I'm just like... Yeah, that's the least embarrassing one. And we'll talk about the Easter Bunny thing later. Uh, it's a closed timeline curve, and uh, it's its whole own episode and everything. So here comes number two. All right, so number two. Uh, the cosmic crowd is going wild. Um, she's like, almost all of them are cheering. She's giving high fives to like a bunch of them. But some of them are like, Gaia. That was cold. That was ice cold. That's your boy. That's your boy, Gaia. That was ice cold. And Gaia just looks at him and says, Oh, Michael? Fuck him. He's tough. He'll get over it. She, like, literally just straight big mamas me in front of the entire cosmos. And the rest of them are just like, Oh. Like, even ice colder. <laughs> and now you maybe ask yourself, how can you get more embarrassing or ice colder than those two stories? Well, that's because this uh, third one exists. All right, number three. And uh, this is like the height of DT vanity, but this is the most happy she's ever been. Um, she's in her green and gold Mary outfit, just uh, like spinning around like cosmic Rick James on the Access Monday. Um, even if I didn't realize it was that at the time. And uh, all she says is, give me any profit. Give me any universe. Give me any profit. Give me any universe. Give me any profit. Give me any universe. And then she starts going through the colors. Give me a blue profit in a white universe. Give me a green profit in a gold universe. Give me a red profit in a black universe. And then she starts going through types of uh, ice cream, like give me a Ben and Jerry's profit in the haagen universe. Give me a Blue Bunny profit in a Briars universe. And then she starts going through types of ice cream. Give me a chocolate profit in a vanilla universe. Give me a mint chocolate chip profit in a Rocky Road universe. And then she just keeps going across the first three eyes and I'm just, sitting there like like just like hours before she basically told me how good I did and I was like one of the greatest human beings that had ever walked the earth and she was so proud of me and now she's just like dunking on me and so I finally said are you almost done and she instantly says not even fucking close Michael this is this is mommy's night and instantly I went back to uh, day four. Now, if you watched my first day one through five video, you'll know the story where I was at the height of my narcissism and I was gonna be the, the it guy for as long as I could be, um, just, and just dunking on the greatest mathematicians in history. Well, you know, all things being equal, um, Carl Frederick Gauss and Bernard Riemann 
and uh, Leonard Euler and David Hilbert were some of God's greatest sons, most influential, most brilliant, and what even prophetically, you know, prophetic vision, what I did to them was, you know, wrong. It was disrespectful. And in that moment, I realized I was in the exact same situation, and I said the exact same thing to them that she just said to me. And, like, you could say karmic justice comes in many forms in this universe, but it's not normally doled out by the creator herself. And in that moment, you know, I just realized I was like, all right, fuck this. I'm going to smoke a bowl and play some video games. And God instantly says, all right, hon, have fun. I hope you don't get queued up with a bunch of donkeys. And I just went, shit. Fuck, fuck, fuck. She's so smart. And so then instead I decided to go up and have my last meal and go up and have my bath before I was reborn. All right, in the uh, attempt to try to finish this up relatively quickly now, um, here's just a couple screenshots of uh, other things that I discovered that night, somewhere in between all the stories that I've told you. Um, so here's two of them. I will definitely go in more depth with that stuff in the future, but yeah, I went through a lot of stuff that night um but then as i decided because i didn't want to play video games get queued up with a bunch of donkeys it was around 9 30 i guess i decided to go upstairs and uh have uh, my last meal which exactly was um a pastrami sandwich with baby swiss on honey wheat bread with yellow french's mustard and sour cream and cheddar ruffles and for dessert i had th three reese's mini peanut butter cups so while i was eating i was thinking my god it was dunking on me so hard you know just i was awesome a couple hours ago but she loves to make fun of me and it's kind of cool but kind of not and then uh so i grabbed my phone because i was gonna uh, listen to music while i took a uh, my bath and everything and for the record that I bathed in red yeah but it's not really red it's it was pink it was uh their bath bombs are called uh, coconut hibiscus Angie used to like them so I bought them for her but uh as I was walking up the stairs kind of I was confused but kind of dejected too for some reason I decided to look up my zodiac for April 5th because I was going to be reborn in a few hours and I wanted to see what the zodiac for April 5th was and this was, it, this was what it was and then when I saw that I started to cry you know everything in the universe made sense again and uh, I went up and uh, had my last bath. Honestly, I thought it was an optical illusion, but that screenshot is, it's Google's Zodiac thing. And uh, in the morning, the next morning, uh, that's the screenshot that I took, but it existed before April 5th. I'm sure they're, most all of them are generated before. But uh, again, it was, you know, it's a pretty good Zodiac, you have to admit and it's from the creator herself, which made it all the better. And then lastly, I uh, clothed myself in all of the uh, green and gold uh, garments that I had. No, I did not dress in red and black as I do today, because uh, the prophet Michael David, the Taurus, the green and gold one, you know, is the vessel. And so I went downstairs and stood on my deck and looked up in the sky and at a star that I thought or hoped was Betelgeuse. It might not be. It was a red star. Um, if I ever get the star match from that night, I can show you guys exactly where I was looking. But um, 
I was out there with my phone and uh, dressed in my green and gold, including a scarf that kind of made me, in my green hat, which kind of made me look like a green and gold prophet or green and gold uh, pope, both. And um, yeah, waited there looking at the phone until it hit 12. And then I looked up at the star and uh, God said, you are now Aries. So now that uh, I'm about to sign off, you may be asking, um, is there a song for Limbo other than um, the two first two Tupac songs, Breathe In and uh, Until the End of Time? Yes, there is. And um, I'm going to post it right after I sign off. So rule number one, um, do not touch other people without their consent, a.k.a. do not hurt each other. And uh, rule number two, it's all about honesty. Lies are ticked down, AKA try not to lie. And um, here's the song of Limbo. <laughs>